Rebel Moon Part 2 is Netflix's newest release and is also the sequel to Rebel Moon Part 1. Uh, I believe the first one was called Child of Fire. This one is called The Scar Giver. And it's actually supposedly was supposed to be one of Netflix's like biggest anticipated sequels or movies of 2024. Can't say I was on that bandwagon when it came to this movie because I was not very excited about it. But I was like to myself, since I saw part one and did a review on that one, might as well do a review on part two as well. I did honestly give this movie a chance. I gave it more of a chance than I should have, but the reason why is because when I saw part one, that one was just about getting the group together, and it was done in such a boring way. I was thinking, maybe part two, now that we got the gang together, maybe it'll be a little bit more interesting. I was dead wrong. I mean, if I could sum up part one in one word, it would be bad. Now, if I could sum it up part two in one word, it would be desperate. Let's first start with the action, because, I mean, there were some action moments that did kind of, you know, was okay to me, but all the other action sequences were just, you know, not good or bad or just, wow, that sucked moments. It, listen to me, I'm actually trying to say that there was, like, this movie did have some moment in here, not trying to be too mean to say that this movie was just hot garbage, but literally... This is really hard right now to actually say that something about this movie was good because 99% of it wasn't good. Action, I, I would probably have to give this one like a four like a four out of ten when it came to action. Plus with so much slow motion shots. Oh! Slow motion shots! I can't forget about talking about slow motion shots when talking about a Zack Snyder film because his overuse of slow motion, it just goes from, you know, bad to just irritating. Zack Snyder like really needs to get like some reference on how to use slow motion from other movies. I think he he'd do well to watch like the Matrix uh, trilogy a couple times and find get some reference from that and see how the Wachowskis did slow motion because slow motion best used in my opinion in a movie is probably from the Matrix. I mean you can get like those circular shots in like a badass moment or you can build like like some combination like you know with a couple hits like you know build up to the best moment in the action a and the slow motion would be fine but I mean then again he probably would just overuse that concept too so that may worry me there the only thing that was probably worse than the action was probably the, the CGI moments I mean I knew there was going to be a lot of CGI in this film there was no doubt about it I mean it's some version of Star Wars and Zack Snyder's head but I mean usually you can I can tell like when CGI is good or then there's moments where it's overused and then it becomes bad so usually I'll be saying like wow that CGI was shit but this CGI wasn't shit it was bullshit I mean Jesus I was like are they even trying this is bad this is horrible this is horrifying to look at when it comes to CGI I was just oh my god no other words on that the characters also were just troll bad as well I felt no connection to them whatsoever they got so bad I was asking to myself why are they even here it's like there is no build up or any sort of character development that was built in the first movie and they had no character development in the second movie except some like small little backstories that happened I don't even know why those were even put in there the only character I felt some connection to at all wasn't even a person it was a robot and I think he was like supposed to be Zack Snyder's version of Darth Vader somehow I don't know how that came to be but I mean that was like the only character I felt was somewhat relatable and that was a very small somewhat I mean Rebel Moon Part 2 really just doesn't have anything good going for it. It's just really bad. Another miss by Zack Snyder. He really needs to sit down and just look at his movies that he's done. Like from these past few years. And just like stop doing the movie making and reviewing all his movies these past few years. Because I don't want to say that he is a bad director. I mean I would say he's okay. Because I've seen some movies of his that did actually capture my interest. They were like in his earlier days like back in 04 
07 and like 08, I believe. So I've seen him make some pretty good movies. But I mean, recently now, ever since like he got, you know, signed up with DC, he's been, you know, just like making his movies like too flat. Seems this is my opinion. He's making the movies too flashy or too style too stylistic with all this CGI not nonsense and not actually giving us a solid flick. I mean, he's like he's trying to just make it so spectacular that we won't see the story going on that this story is just a bad story. That's what Rebel Moon Part 2 is. It's just bad, very bad. There's just nothing good about it. I mean, no matter how hard you you think about it. So, I mean, Zack Snyder can make a solid flick, but he's just really got to take a break and, you know, look back over things. Sorry, all you Zack Snyder fans, but Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, gets an F. This is looking like it's going to probably be on the worst movies list so far. All right, well, you guys have seen Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Please comment here down below what your thoughts were on it. Also, if you like my other videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time, and remember, stay epic!